Good evening again. Uh, we shall be discussing at this session diversification and how can investors lean into uh, everything happening on that front in the region, especially on the uh, policy making side. Uh, the GCC have been working quite hard at probably different speeds when it comes to diversification. Saudi joined the race the last five years and the speed is quite high and it's a very high momentum. But there are certain things we need to look at when we are trying to diversify away from oil revenue, especially when it comes to the GCC economies. Uh, there's always that issue between revenue growth and GDP growth. So we'll be, shall, we'll be discussing all the details when it comes to diversification. Please join me to welcome my esteemed panelists, uh, His Excellency Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, Minister of Finance and the National Economy from Bahrain, His Excellency Mohammed bin Abdullah bin Abdul Aziz Al Jadan, Minister of Finance from Saudi, Thomas Barak, the Executive Chairman of Colony Capital from the US, and last but not least, Jason Greenbelt, and he is the um, former envoy of the White House into uh, uh, the region. I shall start with you, uh, Minister Al Jadan. PIF is the main driver of the diversification strategy taking place um, in Saudi Arabia. Um, the Crown Prince announced 13 key sectors to develop. Uh, and to have uh, sustainable income from it. So I would like you, if you can share with us, how much of a change has been taking place when it comes to diversification in Saudi? Uh, thank you very much and good afternoon or evening or morning, wherever you are uh, around the world. Um, I think what is, what is taking place uh, around in the GCC and is, um, a serious, serious um, change. And I will take Saudi as an example, but that does not really exclude other countries within GCC. I think we are in a very healthy competition. We are complementing each other, and we are trying actually to build on, and we have the Secretary General of the GCC who is pushing us now to uh, do even more in terms of complementing uh, each other as a block that represents significant amount when you look at it as a block. Um, in Saudi, uh, we started Vision 2030 with very clear, very clear targets. And it has been a very difficult journey over the last four or five years, but it actually delivered, and it delivered very well. And we have actually had the COVID-19 pandemic try and test how Vision 2030 is working. Um, and we believe that actually that test was significantly uh, bass. Uh, the, the investment that we have done in the government itself and the reform in the government, the investments in the structural side of the laws, law, uh, regulations that we have improved uh, over the past four or five years that made it a lot easier to do business in Saudi, uh, ease of doing business, ease of investments, uh, facilitating and providing more data, more transparency on how we do business, how our budget is managed, how our expenditure is, uh, is uh, paid. Uh, also made significant investments in technology and His Excellency Abdullah Swaha uh, uh, the, in the previous session talked about how that made it significantly easier to move very quickly from actual to virtual uh, thanks to the investments that we have done over the last three years. Diversification for us is a win-win. We are helping the economy to grow. That will then basically grow the tax base, which means more revenues uh, to the government that will enable it to provide better services to uh, the people of Saudi Arabia and the citizens of Saudi Arabia. That is the policy. The policy is to make sure that we win with the private sector we enable the private sector, and if they are enabled and they win, we will win ultimately, and they will create more jobs to do for the Saudi people, uh, young talents who are aspiring for opportunities uh, in different sectors. Sheikh Salman, it's been 15 years that the uh, Bahrain is trying to diversify away from oil and diversify its economy, but Bahrain hasn't done so well. Why is that? Uh, on uh, the economic side, uh, Bahrain has done quite well in diversifying its economy. 
uh, over 80% of GDP is non-oil. Uh, and those diversification efforts started in the 70s with uh, industries such as the aluminum industry and, and, and petrochemicals and, and, and other value-added industries that were brought in. Uh, and of course, banking and tourism and other very important sectors in the economy. And very systematic efforts were taken about 20 years ago with the establishment of the Economic Development Board chaired by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, where the GDP, tar uh, oil as a composition of GDP was very well targeted and brought down uh, from about more than 40% of GDP down to less than 20 today. So from an economic diversification uh, perspective, Bahrain has done quite well. We still have a lot of work to do on our revenue diversification um, for, for on the fiscal side. But what's important is to recognize why are economic diversification efforts important? Economic diversification efforts are important, of course, to build a wider base for the economy and have growth driven by many different um, uh, sectors. But it's also important that we have very young populations, and we have to remember that we have very young populations in the region today, across the whole region, and the youth of our countries are no longer looking for handouts. Mm -hmm. They are looking for opportunities, and they're looking for opportunities to grow and channel their creative energy into something that builds the country and provides well for themselves. Tom, why are you interested in becoming a major investor in the region? Well, you know, our, our main business is, is communication, is, is producing digital infrastructure. And, and communication is the magic elix elixir and the solution to understanding. So politics, creed, culture vanish in the face of plentiful and expensive and prolific information, and the kingdom is a great example of that as has the region. So, so I look and listening today, and by the way, thank you Fatima for hosting us and His Excellencies and Jason to be with you is a, is a gift. And congratulations to his crown prince for having the boldness to form this forum today for all of us to have this dialogue and, and for Yasser to direct it. But nothing has changed. If you look at the history of Arabia and then Saudi Arabia, uh, communication was always the essential ingredient 2,000 years ago in the spice road and the incense road at, at a time where it was the forum through caravans for the exchange of stuff. And I always, there, there's an Orientalist painting by Jerome, which I, which I always loved, which was a picture of the caravans. And under it was uh, an Arabic, my Arabic, by the way, is a dialect of 100 years ago, which, which I should be ashamed of. But an Arabic saying, saying, you take the same camels and the same road filled with goods going, but you'll always come back empty. So don't worry about the goods, worry about the camel and the road. And that's what's always happened. So we transitioned from the spice and the incense road to 1932, the formation of Saudi Arabia, 1933, a concession given to Standard Oil of California. Everybody talks about this east-west, how difficult it is, His Excellency with the most complicated financial uh, situation in the world, Bahrain taking advantage of adapting to a service culture to be able to, under a, a great monarch, provide the services necessary. But just imagine, Standard Oil of California made more money in 20 years in a language it didn't understand, in a place it had never been, believing in a king who didn't know where San Francisco was and created a concession agreement that was the format of the next hundred years of prosperity. Now what happens is young leadership again steps in saying sustainability is interesting. We've talked about sustainability all day long, but the thing we haven't talked about is sustainability of the culture, of the civilization, which is the most essential part. So this diversification, this switch to digital, all things digital and internet bringing people, kids. Saudi Arabia has a population, 70% of the kids are under the age of 25 in the, in the population. So this ability to be here building infrastructure, building the new trans-Arab pipeline, building the new caravan roads out of internet, following our customers and clients, the Microsoft, the Google, the Salesforce, the Amazons, is the future. And we're honored to be in the midst of these 
these great cultures and, and, and congratulations to Jason and the team for putting the Abraham Accord together. I think in any other political regime, um, we would have been celebrating this alliance and the meld of tribes and flags that gives the region a chance. I think this is the most hopeful decade of young leadership, MBS, MBZ, Tamim, the King, this should be the decade. Jason, you're quite uh, familiar with the region and change is happening and it's happening fast. Where do you see most strength to see further growth and a further diversified GCC economy? Uh, first of all, thank you for having me as a guest. I'm honored to be with the three of you. I, I think the best way I could answer this is when I first came to the region in early 2017, I was privileged to sit with His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and hear about Vision 2030. And it's sort of breathtaking, right? You hear this amazing, these amazing ideas, these creative ideas, and you walk away both excited and you also wonder, is it possible? So here I am now, four years out. I'm here with one of my six children, a 22-year-old. By the way, all six of them were dying to come here because they love Saudi Arabia. I feel at home here. And I'm seeing, I've seen the reality that he has managed, together with King Salman and the leadership here, to pull these ideas off. They're on a trajectory that is not to be believed despite COVID. I'm meeting Saudis, both college students and business people who are excited to be here. Yesterday I had dinner with a uh, family whose college students don't even want to go back to the United States. They're happy that they're here taking classes on Zoom and they want to continue to take classes here on Zoom because they, say, they see the future. And I think that's true of the region generally. I think the Abraham Accords is a, a big benefit to the region. And I think as the region has now pulled itself together, this region is going to put other parts of the world, um, they're gonna pull ahead from other parts of the world because they have a young population, an energetic and optimistic population, and uh, they're all excited to be here. So um, I think we should watch this entire region and see where it goes. Sheikh Salman, you mentioned uh, growth versus revenue growth. Uh, the correlation is not quite right yet. Is it a policy issue? Uh, absolutely. I think, you know, if we were uh, to look at uh, economic growth and specifically the growth of non-oil uh, sectors in the economy and compare it with uh, non-oil revenue generation for the governments, we can see that in some cases it has been lacking and um, in many cases the correlation between uh, the economic growth overall and the fiscal position of countries has been negative. It's negatively correlated. Cost of services go up, but revenues not generated around that economic growth. Uh, and therefore, when we look at a lot of the plans that have been put in place across the region to address the fiscal uh, challenge uh, in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, where there have been uh, a lot of uh, initiatives, and uh, Your Excellency, we have to commend you on those, uh, with regards to raising non-oil revenue, uh, and uh, growing the economy and correlating the economic growth to a better fiscal position. In the Kingdom of Bahrain, we launched the Fiscal Balance Program a few years ago to address that. The Fiscal Balance Program wasn't just about reducing expenditure, and it wasn't just about increasing non-oil revenue. It was about shifting the correlation between economic growth and the fiscal position from a negative one to a positive one. And we need that sustainability to be able to build what we need um, uh, as opportunities for the youth of the region at a time where, Tom, thank you very much for mentioning it, uh, we are really seeing uh, very important changes uh, and a huge opportunity across the region for our biggest resource, which are our youth and our people. Uh, Minister Jadan, what should global investors know in doing business in the region? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. What should investors know about in doing business in the region? I think there is a lot to talk about, but I'll try to make it, I'll, I'll try to make it um, very brief. Um, the opportunities in, in Saudi, um, and we have heard throughout today and possibly even throughout the last uh, few weeks um, with significant opportunities that are coming up in Saudi with some of them in the conventional industries, but some of them in industries that we are really, really focused on. And climate change, as His uh, Royal Highness Prince Abdelaziz talked about earlier, and Yasser talked about, is renewables and renewable energy. It is an area where we are focusing on, where not only 
installing, but also investing in. Um, technology is an area where we have been focusing and will double down on and will continue to invest because we need really to leapfrog the decades that we have lost in net investing in technology and bringing the know-how back. And we, we are capitalizing on young uh, population who are really, really technology savvy and will be able to take this challenge. Um, and then I would add to that is the infrastructure that we have actually spent on it. We provided the privatization initiative uh, throughout 2020 during the most difficult year where we grow about 50% of initiatives. 21, we will grow another 100% uh, of new initiatives in the privatization in the water and the healthcare and the education and the w w waste uh, treatment. Uh, and beyond, even in other sectors. So the opportunities are ample, uh, and I think individual investors where they have a very specific focus, they will need to look at really that, re that specific sector and the investment in that specific sector. I would just finalize this comment by saying, in addition to all of this, we have reformed the capital market, both on the equity side and the debt side. Uh, the debt market uh, liquidity have grown about 200 percent during 2020 and we are likely to see even more growth in that area because the market has a depth there are investors who are looking for safe yields and this market provides that Tom what would you like to see as an investor on a policy level I think transparency and 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 the, the kingdom has it and the GCC is approaching it and the practitioners and entrepreneurs and businesses have to have the cultural sixth sense to adapt to it. I think transparency, consistency, political stability, you know, we, we all know we're in a very rugged neighborhood and the tribes and flags are shifting. So my hope is that through this digital frontier and great young leadership, that the gap between the haves and the have-nots, which is a Western problem, it's not really a Middle Eastern problem, it's the biggest problem we have in the globe, that through technology, through the digital transformation, through the acceptance of information and the delivery of goods, that gap narrows, and the beneficiaries of it are delivering what's happening now, bringing us, the West, into the midst of their civilizations and say, help us, let's do it hand in glove and we'll succeed. Thomas Burke, the executive chairman of uh, Colony from the United States, Jason Greenbald, the former envoy from the White House, His Excellency uh, Minister Mohammed Ibn uh, Abdul Aziz Al Jadan, Minister of Finance, and His Excellency Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, Minister of Finance and National Economy from Bahrain. Thank you very much for your input into this session. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for joining us for this session. And it is my pleasure